that Jamie talks about. Before we get into today's video, I want to say a quick Happy Mother's Day to all the moms over in the UK, especially my friend Keely. They celebrate Mother's Day on a different day than we do here in the US, so I do hope that all of you have been enjoying a wonderful Mother's Day. So let's get into today's article. This one is from the Sunday Times. Um, it's titled, Justice Warriors or Troll Army. Meet the Depp Heads, Johnny Depp's diehard superfans. And this article is by Poppy Wood, and this article actually dropped today as a recording. The date is March the 14th, 2021. So let's just start out, and you can probably tell by that title. The Sunday Times is owned by the publisher of The Sun. And so we're, we know right off the bat this is going to be a hit piece, you know, yeah. She, she's not going to um, to give a fair and balanced, I guess you'd say, look at um, the fans of Johnny Depp. Um, instead, we'll, we'll see in this article as it goes. She'll give a little bit, but then she takes a whole lot every time she does. Um, and she also demonstrates that she's got a flair for the dramatic. Um, her first paragraph is... Um, Johnny Depp is at one end of a long wood paneled corridor. His ex-wife A.H. is at the other. In between them, men and women in corkscrew wigs, mass journalists, and three Depp fans scuttle through the dark labyrinth of the High Court in London. So, she's got a flair for the dramatic. And um, this article, of course, it begins during the UK trial. And just almost immediately, you see here that Seeds are being planted that the people who support Johnny, well, they, they might be just a little bit odd. I mean, like her first description here of some of the people who attended the trial, she says, Some arrive with briefcases stuffed full of timelines. Others sport the actors' trademark plaid shirts and purple tinted glasses. And so, you know, in that description right there, you just almost would think, a little bit odd. They're showing up with briefcases full of timelines, but they're not involved in the trial, and they dress like Johnny, you know. So, so you see already she she's planting those seeds. And now, don't forget though, this is a unbiased look. So you know, <laughs> and she even right here, she's described she describes Johnny at a lunchtime break in the court. She says um. A small tattooed figure emerges and is chaperoned into a side room. So she's making Johnny out to be small and tattooed, you know. So there's more of those seeds, you know. And then, of course, she's got to do the obligatory. Well, Johnny lost this law case. But right here, she even throws in, the judge ruled that there was sufficient evidence to believe that 12 of the 14 incidences of alleged assault against A.H., and she includes some of the claims that Depp did these things to her and says, and put her in fear for her life after sustained and multiple assaults. But she doesn't mention right here, what she forgets to mention is that Judge Nickel, who, who made this judgment, should have recused himself from the very beginning because he had multiple ties to the son, um, his, his own son, worked for Talk Radio, which is owned by The Sun. And, oh yeah, Dan Wooten, at the time of the trial, worked for Talk Radio, too. And, and there's multiple other things that ties Judge Nickel to The Sun, and he should have recused himself. But there's no mention of that in this article. Um, she does say that Johnny filed for appeal, but she quickly throws in, and he was fired from Fantastic Beast. So... <laughs> The next eight paragraphs is a description of a fan who is there at the trial. And, you know, tucked into these paragraphs, there's also a, a kind of an odd description of Johnny as a Garth heartthrob, now, which that's fine with me, but you can see where a lot of people, it's putting those seeds in your mind that are a little bit odd. And then she does say, that his fan base has now calcified into a global campaign for male victims of abuse and men falsely accused of DV. 
And she uses a quote from the fan that she's describing in these paragraphs here. She says, um, not just a bunch of silly girls who want to get into his pants. So she, she, as I said, she gives a little and she takes a lot, you know, and, and she goes back into her description of this fan that she never uses their real name. She gives her a fake name of Caroline Hicks. And, um, I don't like this description she uses because she says this at the beginning of this paragraph. She feels she knows Deb. Now, the fan never says that she she personally feels she knows Deb. In fact, this paragraph is a description of that the fan's given her of how she saw Johnny so many times during the trial when she was there that... She, it kind of felt like a day at the office, and she describes bumping into him in a hallway when A.H. was on the stand, and he couldn't really say anything, so she, he just hugged me. And the fan even says, I almost feel like I can call him Johnny, but then also that's a bit like I think I know him too well. So, I mean, even the lady doesn't say that she feels like she knows Johnny. She, she's describing the interactions she had with him at the trial. So, you know, but that's more of that seed planting. And the lady goes on to talk about the Twitter core, who are like activists, and get all the documents, does the research, all that. And, you know, then she, um, she talks about, you know, how the Twitter community of debt fans can clash sometimes. And from here, she moves into Lost Beyond Pluto, who all, we all know and love. And um, she tells a little bit about why she stopped using her real name online. And she goes on to describe the type of videos and information that Lost Beyond Pluto does. And then she tells how we as Depp fans have a distrust for the media. And she never tells why. Um, could it be that false narrative that you've all had from the beginning is why we don't trust you? And she uses Lost Beyond Pluto as an example of we do trust. And um, then she throws this in. You only have to read the comments on her videos to realize there is a darker side to the depth community. And for evidence, in the next few paragraphs, she talks about the boycott, boycott on L'Oreal and the petition to get her dropped from Aquaman. Um, she talks about social media feeds being swamped with comments such as turd and abuser. <laughs> And the hashtags, H is a liar, H is an abuser, and she talks about how it's used over 100,000 times. And then the next several paragraphs are about AH's claims that Russian bots did all this because of all the abuse and hate descending on her. And, of course, Adam Waldman is at fault here, you know. She does at least mention that um, we made Dior Sauvage the bestseller last year and so I mean but then she goes on she talks about how um, Adam did tweet that she didn't donate the seven million dollars or that she didn't donate anything to CHLA but she makes sure to to put in AH's lawyer statements she never mentions though that AH testified to this in the UK trial or that Judge Nickel used that as part of his basis for why he found Johnny guilty so, and um, she goes on to talk about how she, the moments after messaging a Waldman enthusiast, she was descended on by Depp heads in their hundreds and the warnings against talking to her and how her personal details were posted online. Old articles she had written were, were scavenged from the depths of the internet. She says, I locked my account as if pulling my hands up over my head in a dusty scuffle. And you see how she makes us look just threatening here. And I'm going to stop right here because we're going to do a part two to this and we're going to talk about the difference in how she describes the AH fans in the next part of this. So be sure and join me for the second one. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. Feed the algorithm that Miss Tug says and share this video. Subscribe if you hadn't. And as always, thank you. And until next time, be blessed.